waking at 4 a.m. is pretty scary. No idea what's lurking in the shadows. This amazing road trip is sponsored by Iceco. Cooler than a cooler. Okay guys, today is the day. If you haven't seen my other video where I talk about how to plan a road trip with a Tesla or an electric vehicle using plug share and a better route planner, make sure you guys check that out. Today we're gonna be going from California all the way to Tucson, Arizona. It takes about seven hours, but if you include charging time, it's gonna be about an eight hour drive. We're gonna go ahead and visit the cousins, maybe check out some caves and maybe any rental properties. But if you guys live in Tucson and what do you guys think of Tucson? Let me know in the comments below. It's a good thing I have my Tesla pack list ready. It has a checklist of all the important stuff that you need to bring whenever you go on any type of road trip. And it's super detailed. My wife and I, we made it together for you guys. So make sure you guys check out the list in the description below. Now we've been on a ton of road trips before and I love my Tasmanian cooler. It's super insulated, thick, and it keeps the ice cold for days. It also helps that it fits really easily in the trunk or the frunk. Super light and I love it. But I wanted something with a little more cooling power, especially on long, hot road trips like to Tucson, Arizona. And my dog Simba is on a special raw diet. It's honestly been working super well for him. He's a golden retriever, he has all these allergies. We got him on this raw patty called Northwest Naturals has super good ingredients and it's something that I personally use for Simba and he hasn't really had that many allergies since putting him on that diet. But yeah, I mean, I have to keep my cooler cold, especially with the raw food as well and we also have broccoli and Greek yogurt. So I'm happy to have this fridge freezer combo by Iceco. It's called the Go 20 model and it holds up to 21 quarts. And man, this thing looks so sexy. It's like the apple of all coolers. It's super high tech. It has an easy to use Bluetooth app that connects to the cooler so you can always check the temperature. The side is all touch sensitive. It has soft closed doors and LED interior light. It has dual zone cooling and it has this awesome rapid cooling feature where it turns on the left side for 15 minutes so it can get super cold on that left side or if you remove the divider, it'll cool the whole thing. The temperature also goes all the way down to zero, which is perfect for the raw patties. I can easily plug it into my cigarette outlet in the trunk. It's super portable, and what's awesome is if we ever stay in a hotel that doesn't have a fridge or freezer, which happens a lot, we just bring the ice cold cooler into our hotel, plug it in, and it still works like a fridge or freezer. It costs $450, but you can purchase it in the description below if you guys want. Now let's head on over to our car because there's a new setting you need to enable if you ever charge your car to 100% or if you're driving your Tesla in super cold weather. Alrighty, so I got my GoPro mount here. I'm going to be doing some FSD videos to see how well it drives by itself. So stay tuned for that. If you see my other video, my battery isn't a battery from the factory. It's actually a refurbished or reconditioned battery because my high voltage battery actually died. When I first got the battery, I was super disappointed because I was only getting a maximum range of 316 miles, which isn't what I had before. The tech did tell me that it does take a month to recalibrate and it was a month and it still didn't recalibrate as well. I think I gained like only two miles. However, after a few months, I definitely gained my miles back, so I'm super happy. Now, if you didn't know what Tesla's, the car regeneratively breaks by using the motors. That's why you could do something called one pedal driving, where when you take your foot off of the accelerator, the car will slow down by itself using the motors. However, if you're at 100% state of charge or if it's super cold outside and there's no energy that can be put back into the battery, that regenerative braking is reduced and it kind of feels like you're driving a normal car because you start coasting. It feels pretty weird. There's a new setting that Tesla released in a software update that you guys should enable. Even if you guys don't charge your car to 100%, it's always nice to enable, it doesn't hurt. But what it does is when you let your foot off of the accelerator, it will still slow down similar to as if you were regenerative braking by blending the brakes in. And to do that, all you have to do is go to your controls, go to pedal and steering, and then click this. Apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. And then when you click that, it'll tell you more options, like what happens. So I definitely recommend enabling that setting. Now our first stop, I did input it into the Tesla navigation. It's gonna be Morongo Casino. That supercharger is awesome. It has the coolest bathrooms, which I'll show you. It has a casino, it has a little dog park where the dogs can go to the bathroom. And it was also super easy to send that address from my phone to the navigation. I just pulled up the Better Route Planner app, saw my itinerary, saw the first stop I wanted to go to. 
copied the address, put it in Google Maps, and then sent it to my Tesla. Now what you can do is input waypoints into your Tesla navigation. However, for me, I found that didn't work so well because sometimes I would be near the Tesla supercharger and it would just move on to the next one, which is super weird. So for me personally, I just like putting one destination in at a time. We're already at 156 kilowatts and climbing. Made it to the Morongo Cabazon Supercharger. As you can see, it's in the casino. There's casinos inside. I'll show you guys in a second. Automatic car wash. You can get ice here. Again, normally if you put the destination to like Tucson, the test navigation kept wanting us to go to the Indio supercharger. However, when I checked a better route planner, it was only like a minute charging difference between the Morongo and the Indio one. So we were like, oh, we like the Morongo and we, it's a lot better than the Indio one, has more chargers, it's newer. So we just decided to go here. But again, it's all personal preference. That's why I like a better route planner because if I didn't plan it, it probably would have just told me to go to Indio. Just finished the bathroom. So the restrooms are a little disappointing. The uh, little seat cover thing that they had before, they don't have anymore. There's still some slots and casino in there. But yeah, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the Better Route Planner app. So right now, we went to the bathroom, letting the dogs chill for a little bit. We're at 75%. So I'm gonna go into my Better Route Planner app. And it's cool because you can just kind of calculate everything. So right now we're at the Cabazon one. And then I'm gonna say we have 75% here. And now it wants us to still charge at Ehrenberg. We're gonna arrive with 13%. So because I know we're gonna arrive with 13%, I'm gonna just have us charge to like 85%, so we have a little bit more wiggle room. Then I'm just gonna send this destination to Daddy Chill after I press share here and it sends to Daddy Chill. If you see a post like this, it's the perfect time to do some stretches. I like to put one leg up and then lean forward with the other leg straight and you're gonna feel a stretch right here. And then I lean away from it, so towards the side and it really helps stretch that low back. Those are the muscles that get super tight whenever you're on a road trip. Another good stretch is if you see a bench or a seat, you just sit down, cross your leg like a guy, push down on here, and then lean forward. You're gonna feel that stretch like right in that butt. That's that piriformis muscle that gets super tight as well. Find that post, leg straight, and then you lean this way. Oh, You feel a stretch here, and then you also feel a stretch in your back there. So yeah, I think we're almost done charging. We're gonna go and bring the dogs back and then head on over to Edendale or Ehrenberg. That matte wrap is looking clean with that lighting though. A quick check on the cooler. Looking good, 32 degrees, zero. So it maintained that temperature nicely. It is nice and frosty in here. Woo, wow, that's really cold. That's my cigarette outlet thing. Normally it's at 13, but it's at 12.6, I think, because we are using the cooler. This is what shows how our 12 volt battery is doing. If it gets too low, that means it's discharging, which isn't a good sign. 26% will arrive. Going to the trips tab. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I made it to Arendelle with 24%. We're gonna charge up here. Nice grassy area for the dogs. Next to a Best Western, a truck stop. We're gonna go to the Wendy's, get some breakfast. Wendy's has breakfast, right? Not peanut. Huh? So we're gonna go to Wendy's, we're gonna get some stuff. Luckily we have our all set tray here. I don't know if you've seen my previous video. Perfect to use when you're at a supercharger or whenever. Just gotta snap these closed and now it's like a giant tray. Super sticky surface. Just place it on here like this. So it gives you tons of space. It's super sticky. All set is doing a giveaway, so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel as well as like the video. Follow my Instagram and TikTok if you have one as well to be entered to win and comment below if you guys want one of these trays. So here it's gonna calculate. This is the test of navigation. Right now we're at 48%. It wants me to stop at the Quartzsite Supercharger, charge for 20 minutes, then charge at Tempe, Arizona. So not in Tucson and see how I arrive. Do you see that? I'll arrive to my destination with 16% which is too low because there's no chargers nearby. But see how they kind of calculated it for you. I like how they have this now before they didn't have that. On here, we're gonna stop at Ehrenberg. And remember I like the Bucky supercharger, which is why I inputted the Bucky supercharger there. And it wants me to stop at Tucson. <laughs> so we got the all set tray set up over here. We got the Wendy's, so we're just gonna eat a snack real quick. And then we're gonna make our way to Bucky. There's a quartzite superchargers. Nothing there except Carl's Jr. There's a ton of them though. 
three, four superchargers. So in a software update that really improved the navigation prediction, that's when it calculates how much battery you have estimated when you arrive at your destination. For us, it said we would have 22 or 23 percent. In the past, it will be maybe plus or minus 5 percent based off of how speeding and if there's tons of winds and stuff. But it's sticking firm at 23, 22 percent, which is pretty awesome. That means it's really accurate. Like I usually open the trip tab to see the elevation changes and see how much range I lose or gain. And if you see here, we're gaining some range actually because there was some traffic. So I was going like 70 here and there. But normally the gray line is what it predicts and the green line is what you're gonna have. Grab that Buckeye. The navigation says we're gonna be here. I'm gonna change it because I wanna charge first. We have to charge it for 20 minutes. Let's go and charge up real quick. It's like a Lowe's, Cars Junior, some Teslas over here. Overall, not too bad of a drive so far. It was on autopilot the whole way going 85. Again, I love the estimated trip predictor. It was super accurate this time. But man, people speed on that freeway. There's so many trucks too. So like I said, the Tesla navigation wants us to go to our Airbnb directly from here, which is fine. However, I wanted to charge up a little bit so we have more juice. So I'm gonna be going to the Tucson supercharger. So we'd have to charge here until we hit 76% to arrive at Tucson with 10%. We're gonna charge here till 80. Right now we are at 39%. Eight stalls available and it says there's two out of order. So it says it right there. We have to charge for another 10 minutes to continue on to our trip. So we have one more stop to charge, Tucson, Arizona. It's gonna take us an hour and 52 minutes to get there. We're gonna arrive there at 10.42 a.m. And what's cool is you can also add a waypoint. So you click on the three dots, add stop, and then we're gonna go to the apartments that my cousin's staying at. See yeah, how there is a gray line that's fading in and out? That means that's the lane the Tesla wants me to be in or I'm, I have to be in in order to follow the route. And eventually I have to move on over. I still have a few more miles though. Arrived at the Tucson supercharger, 250 kilowatts. There's superchargers here on this side, and then more on that side over there. We'll get a quick massage. No happy ending though. We're gonna see how we're charging. So we're at 19%, already at 210 kilowatts. Now we're gonna be going to my cousin's apartment. Then after that, we're gonna go to the Airbnb. So I need to calculate how much percentage I need to arrive to the Airbnb with like 30 or 40%. Right now we're at 61%. Let's just say I want to be leaving with 65%. I'm going to calculate it. Yeah, so 65%, 60%, 56%. I'll arrive at the Airbnb with 56, no problem. So we could definitely leave. Fries. I thought it was Fry's Electronics, it's actually Fry's food store. 98 cent store, not the 99 cent store. So it's one cent cheaper. Okay, so we arrived at the Airbnb with 53%. That's equivalent to 165 miles. The Airbnb that we're staying at is nice because everything's more spread out and it's in the hills. It just feels more secluded, it feels more safe. But yeah, we made it with more than I expected. We charged for a little longer because we were doing stuff, so that was nice. So we're gonna go ahead and show you around the house real quick. Let's get this party started. Here is the Airbnb, one story. So there's a standard outlet. It would probably give us like two miles an hour but better than nothing so i just wanted to show you guys how i charge my car with a standard outlet especially in a place where i'm not familiar with because you really have to tinker with the current and make sure it's not too high because you don't want to trip a breaker because it's just going to be a headache for you as well as the host so this is why i love having my mobile charger in case of an emergency i have the standard plug as well as the nema 1450 i'm going to be using the standard plug 
and then we're gonna be plugging it into a standard outlet right here. Now, most outlets are 15 amp rated, which means it can handle about 15 amps before the breaker is tripped. A lot of people recommend putting it at 12. However, I found out that's still almost maxing it out. So if it is being shared with another current, with another device, because just because there's nothing plugged into there, it could be shared with another plug. So we always wanna be careful. Some people were saying maybe nine or 10 is good, but still I found that maybe too high. So I found out that the best amp to keep your Tesla at when you are charging with the standard outlet is eight amps. And it's definitely really slow. However, your car is just parked here all day, all night. A little bit of charge is better than nothing. It's super easy to do on the app or on the Tesla screen. Just make sure after you do all that, you have to remember that your car isn't at home or at work or at a place where the car turns sentry mode off. So make sure you guys turn sentry mode off so it doesn't drain the battery if your car is in a safe place. It's super simple to do. I'm just gonna be pushing it in here and it's done like that, that's it. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to our outlet over here. So this is connected to the lights over there. Plugged it in. This shows that it's on and working. And then from there, it's as easy. Same thing you do when you're charging a Tesla supercharger. You can press the button to open the lid. You're just gonna plug it in here. So right now it's at 12 amps. We're gonna bring it down to eight amps. It's gonna be charging. We're gonna do, let's see how much. It's at 52% right now. So over 24 hours remaining, which is totally fine. I'm not here to charge a lot. I'm just here to give it a little bit. So right now I'm at 52%. We'll see how much juice I get. It's at 4.18 p.m. So again, make sure you turn sentry mode off. There's a little pull-up bar, so we could have a little pull-up competition if we wanted to. The weather's perfect. We just came in a perfect time, overcast it. Feels like it's around 80s, uh, lovely. Nice Airbnb, super clean, got that farmhouse. The core, that's the pool over on that side. Got the Sono speakers going. Ooh, it's gonna, we're gonna have a good time. To the left, we have a bedroom here. Nice bedroom, very nice. And then a bathroom. I think it's a shared bathroom, but super clean. Hello, we just drove eight hours. Low ceilings, as you can see, very low. Another bedroom here, and I think we get the master. I love the master. Ooh, perfect entry to there. Has a nice shower here. Beautiful. I think the biggest thing with any Airbnb is you want it to be clean and you want it to be like modern. And for us, that fits the bill perfectly for everything. Here is the backyard. Beautiful area to hang out. That's what we're gonna do, especially the first day. Tomorrow we're gonna do a little hike. Look at that cactus, is huge. Place to hang out over there. We can barbecue over there, hopefully it works. So we're gonna check out the casita. Casita is like a guest house. And a lot of times the Airbnbs, they charge extra to use it. However, this one included it. So hopefully it's open. Yeah, I can't see inside. Just go. Open it. We're scared because it's completely. Oh, 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 oh. Hello? Hello? Oh, they got a portable AC. It smells so new in here. Why don't you sleep in here? I'm not sleeping in here. There's someone sleeping here. Look how nice it is. This is a bachelor pad. Wow, it has a mini fridge, double bunk beds. This is a definitely a nice oh, Airbnb stay. Little... That's cool. Freedom! <laughs> going to an Airbnb like this Bruh. is that it's pitch black. Oh, come on, I'm like serious. Like sound of the lambs. Can you come? That's scary. Can you come? 14 Pro Max, low light camera test. All right, so it's around 6 a.m. right now. It's been over 12 hours since the car has been charging. And we are still charging, so not too bad. I wanted to try the NEMA 1450 since I've never actually got to try a NEMA 1450. Damn. So from first glance, I thought it was new 1450, but it actually is not. Look at that. It's actually a dryer plug designed for the dryer. So unfortunately, I cannot test the new 1450 charging speed. So 
we're at 68%. Looks like we're gonna gain energy back. We're gonna arrive at 41. When we come back, we'll arrive at 46 because of all the elevation changes. So yeah, cool. It's gonna do a really crazy roundabout, so I'll show you that it does really well. No other car company will do this because this is like a random road. There we go. Daddy chills over there. We just got to the Sunset Trail. It took us about an hour to get up all the way. Super windy, so take ginger if you have it. Shh, shh, shh. They're gonna spread. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Those are skunks. Those are squirrels, bro. They look like skunks. They're squirrels, look. Nice views. Wow, Made it back, we're currently driving back to the Airbnb. Overall, it was a nice hike. I say it's moderate to kind of difficult. If you do decide to do the Sunset Trail hike at Mount Lemon, make sure you guys bring your hiking shoes, hiking sticks, tape up your ankles, because it's very rocky. But there was a nice watering hole for the dogs. They were able to swim. It was like really nice. So overall, not too bad. Even though we have 43%, we're gonna arrive back to our Airbnb with 49%. I rarely see it go the opposite way. You can kind of see how it's actually going up because we're gaining all that miles back, which is pretty cool. Made it back to the Airbnb. Now I'm charging up again with the outlet. Remember that the Tesla remembers your location of where you're charged. So I don't have to change it to eight amps every time. So if you look here, it's already at eight amps at this location. Next up, we're gonna do some caves. We look like weirdos, Asian weird. We're like the only Asians here. <laughs> look at how we're dressed. <laughs> Made it to the caves. Super nice views, so quiet. Definitely no EV charging here, so make sure you guys charge up before. Got a nice little sculpture here. They really, uh, really got the nipples right. We're gonna check it out. I don't know if I can record in there. We'll test out the 14 Pro Max low light camera. So I am a little claustrophobic. I'm also six foot three. So, I mean, I don't even think I could get into the entrance over there. We'll see what happens. Got our helmets all done. Now we're gonna go into the caves. Everyone, lights are on, lights are on. Sorry. Oh, oh shit! Oh, I can't, I can't see. Oh, yeah, guys. Fire is laser. What's good? In a tunnel? This is the fun part. Oh yeah, you can grab onto this. Watch your head up. Watch your watch your head up here. Oh. Uh huh. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't fall backwards because you will die. Just finished the tour. Ugh. Tired. We did the ladder tour. I think it was like fifty dollars. Super fun. Our guide ever it was amazing she had all these funny jokes she kept us safe we didn't feel claustrophobic at all and it was a lot of fun and think in the beginning i was feeling a little sick because it does smell like urine as well as the humidity because of all the bats i didn't see any bats i really wanted to see some however they do hide out they don't get in your way or anything but overall super fun so we are finished with arizona we're going to be heading back to california very simple to do with a better rap hunter again I didn't plan this part out since I kind of know already where I'm gonna be going. We're gonna be leaving probably, we'll probably have 90% by tomorrow. If you look at the Tesla, I did change it so it's 10 amps instead of eight and the circuit has not tripped. So just like Tucson, we're gonna be stopping at Bucky and then we're gonna be going to Quartzsite. But like I said before, I don't like Quartzsite. So Bucky, then Ehrenberg, and then Indio. Good morning, it is 2.45 a.m. We are on our way back to home in Irvine. I let the car charge up 
It was pretty awesome. I feel like if you guys can find an Airbnb with just a standard outlet and you guys aren't driving a lot, charging your car with a standard outlet is so easy to do. Just make sure you keep it at a low amp so you don't trip the breaker. Our stay was amazing. Highly recommend this Airbnb. I'll make sure I link it in the description below. Again, we paid for everything. We didn't get sponsored or anything. We just really liked this Airbnb. It was awesome. So if you guys ever are in the Tucson area, it's pet friendly, has a pool. It was awesome and we really like it. Make sure you guys subscribe and smash that like button for more awesome videos.